been great because we've been able to respond to some of the kind of major events here in recent years. This has been a, a society that's been changing obviously quite a lot and uh, it's been great to just uh, cast a kind of comic eye on it. A lot of people when the power sharing agreement came in said to me, you'll be out of a job now, you can't make fun of this anymore. I think um, it'll become more a satire on the general political situation here. There'll always be the undercurrent of the orange and the green in this part of the world, so I think there'll always be something to make fun of. And I have every confidence that our politicians here will mess up on a regular basis and will be able to poke fun at them for various reasons. We've been in a very privileged position really um, to be on the air whilst this political process was evolving and um, I, I do honestly feel as if we've been a part of it because a lot of people outside respond to you in a very positive way and say you know, that it reflects what people are thinking very often or um, it doesn't always reflect reality but um, it, it, has been, it has been an important part of the whole process I think as well. How dare you Don Reggio? It was Don Geraldo who scuppered everything. Now, just a cotton-picking minute. It was you and your hothead consigliere. Who are you calling a hothead, fathead? Who are you calling a fathead? Basta, basta. What did you call me? Basta. How did you bring this to the BBC? I had done a couple of bits and pieces w with another radio station many years ago, just snippets of comedy, and then a mutual friend uh, introduced Owen and myself, and I gave Owen a tip and let him listen to a few voices and he liked it and he reckoned like myself that the time was right for a, a political based impression based sketch series and that's where it all started. Like everybody else I couldn't believe uh, how talented Sean is. Uh, when I heard the, that tape I just, I mean, it's incredible to hear one person doing all those voices, not that one. great part of the process for me is to come in and record the, the things dry and then when you hear it broadcast with all the fantastic sound effects that the, the guys put in here, it's, it really makes it. One of the things about this is that nobody can believe it's just one person really doing all the voices because it sounds like a cast of thousands. Where are you, Jerry? I wanted to see you. I will not make a change. I think I need to check to make sure that we're all on message as a party. How do you mean, Marty? I want us all singing off the same home sheet. Home sheet? Aye, but don't want the public thinking we're involved in some sort of tough. What kind of tough did you have in mind? You know a difference of opinion, like a lover's tough? Oh, a tough? No, no, certainly not. Well, I would describe myself as a comedy impressionist. You know, uh, uh, the stand-up routine that I do at, at dinner functions, usually um, corporate functions, sports dinners, would be, say, a half an hour of um, impressions of local political figures and also general celebrity celebrities from TV and sports and show business. We just need to use our skull here, Jerry. Our, our heads, like our intelligence? No, our skull, our talent. Oh, yes, Marty, absolutely. I don't want to be wasting time stuck in meetings when I could be away somewhere sunning myself. Aye, well, I wouldn't mind a wee bit of sunning myself. But... Well, I wouldn't mind a wee bit of sunning myself, Jerry, but I wouldn't go around shouting about it. There's nothing wrong with a bit of sun now and again, Marty. No, I'm not going to argue with you, Jerry. After all, that he... No, Jerry, I'm not going to argue with you. It's a very different lifestyle for me now. I used to be a teacher. Um, I taught French for 17 years, and I decided to take a, a year out of school uh, to have a go at um, a different type of career with the intention of going back, but... It's now 10 years since I left teaching, so I don't think I'll be going back. I was thinking of doing a jungle type thing. What do you mean, like, uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here? No, Jerry, like, we pay for a jungle. A nice wee jungle on the radio could do the trick. Or maybe for a laugh we could all get into cults and have our photo taken. You want us to get into cults, Marty? What sort of thing? The Moonies? The Scientologists? What are you talking about? No, just your typical cult, you know, the tartan kind with a spurn. It'll be a hut with the voters. Why do we want to be in a... <laughs> Why do we 
don't want to be a hunt. Why? Everyone wants to be a big hunt with the voters, Jerry. If you don't connect with the people, you're a dead, uh, uh, a dead, uh, duck. What do you call me? Marty. What is wrong with you? <laughs> we get nice feedback from people, you know, in-house in BBC, you get messages uh, of support and also, I mean, I, I work on the after-dinner circuit in Northern Ireland as well, so a lot of people would come up to me and say they enjoy the show very much. I've met a number of the politicians over the years as well at various political dinners and they claim to enjoy the show, but uh, I think some enjoy it more than others. But I met, I met uh, Dr Paisley. I had always been against violence, but now I had been drawn into the maelstrom. As the Taoiseach's car approached, I'm ashamed to say that I fired. First one snowball, then another, and shouted, get back to the Republic. His car sustained a couple of direct hits, though he himself seemed to be unperturbed. Ah, uh, happy days. Such happy days. And he, he said he'd seen it a few times, though he didn't watch a great deal of television, and he seemed to enjoy it as well. And I've actually been booked uh, to do dinners by a number of political parties over the last uh, few years, so they can't be that upset about it. <laughs> Most of them are flattered to be included in the programme. Um, the worst offence you could give them would be to exclude them from the programme. Iris Robinson, have you ever heard from her? Uh, no, but um, Iris seems to put her foot in it regularly, <laughs> so she's going to be included in lots of sketches, I would say, for the next year or two. See, there's an example of a, of a character who's emerged quite recently into a very kind of high profile position and we're always looking for good strong female characters because in Northern Irish politics there aren't many of them and um, we have uh, a woman called Cathy who does our female impressions who actually does them down the line from, from London uh, and um, we're always trying to find characters for her to do so Iris Robinson has been a gift for us and we're trying to develop that kind of Iris Peter Robinson relationship and they're now almost like a sort of first and deputy first lady kind of role that they've got so um, it's going to be a lot of fun with that. Jerry why are you so nervous? I'm not going to bite you. <clears throat> Look when Dr Paisley steps down I'd like to become deputy leader and I'd like you to propose me and back me Jeffrey. Are you trying to seduce me Mrs Robinson? What? Uh, politically, I mean. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, oh, I need to get out of here. I want you to know, my door is always open, Jeffrey. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Robinson. Well, like everything here, you have to be aware of the sensitivities of the, the watching public, as it were. So it is quite carefully balanced, you know. Um, we try to poke fun of each side equally. And now, children's book at bedtime with Geoffrey Donaldson. Hello, boys and girls. This is your Uncle Geoffrey here, and I've got a very well-known story for you tonight all about an exceptional little chap called Pinocchio. And now, children's book at bedtime with Jerry Kelly. Uh, hello children and welcome to another bedtime story. My name is Jerry and I'm going to tell you the story this week of Jack and Jill. And now, children's book at bedtime with David Irvine. Hello all of you out there who constitute the infant population. My name is David Irvine and I'm here to recount a traditional folk narrative incorporating elements of supernaturalism and anthropomorphism. And now, Children's Book at Bedtime with Mark Durkin. Hello children. Tonight's bedtime story is a tale for our times, a parable if you like, about the pitfalls as well as the pleasures of peaceful coexistence between two disparate entities. There are certain voices come to me fairly naturally. I think I have a good ear for accents and languages. I used to be a language teacher so there must be some sort of connection there I think. Um, but some voices I do find 
very tricky and others I just don't go near because I know I'm not going to get close enough. Uh, what is your name and why have you come here? Uh, hoist with our own petard, you might say, gentlemen. Uh, I don't know about the crack, but we can certainly do the talks, but... Uh, I see. Very devious, George. Very devious. I was strolling around the west of the city, where people knew me pretty well. Some guys were looking at me a bit funny. I suppose the reckon that changed. I think possibly the one I've had most reaction um, with in, in the last couple of years has been the Sinn Féin minister, Jerry Kelly. Um, I seem to just have got him pretty pretty well off <laughs> and uh, he's one of the ones who, who was asked about it and heard himself on the radio and um, or, and asked his driver was that the folks in the hill on and his driver said no that actually is you <laughs> so he had some sort of confusion about it. so I, I have his voice off quite well you know and that's always uh, that's always one of the ones that uh, generates the most reaction from people outside. I shoot it after them. The name's Kelly, by the way. Kelly P.I. No, it's fantastic and it's great to be um, working on a topical programme like this where you feel that you're part of the kind of current affairs agenda in a way. You know, you're, you're the kind of comic an antidote to it, if you like. And um, it's struck such a chord with people that it's great because you can, you can work in a broadcasting organisation and just hope that people have heard what you've done and have enjoyed it and that's all you can ask for but when people actually come up to you and tell you how much they've enjoyed it that that's fantastic and um, that's happened a lot with the folks in the hill and um, it's true what Sean said to have been uh, commenting in this way or, or just sending up what's been happening here in in recent years has been a, a privilege really because I think people are going to look back on this point in our history as you know quite epic and uh, might dig out a, a Folks in the Hill programme one day and, and find out how people were responding to it in, in a comic way. Do you miss Tony Blair? Yeah, well, still do. very much so, you know, he's one of my favourite characters of all time, probably, you know. But, uh, but no, um, he is, uh, he was a lovely character to do, and as Owen said, it was the dynamic between him and Bertie Ahern, and I think they were pretty close uh, friends through all their, their political career. If this thing's not going to work, it's not going to work. We've tried. Yeah, we've given it our best shot. If you can't agree by 24th of November, sure, then that's it. Listen, Tony, I'll go on here, OK? And I'll uh, see you on November the 25th then, right? OK, Bertie, I'll just see you out. I think we've rattled it, Bertie. Yeah, I think so. And we never even mentioned giant sovereignty once. <laughs> Shh, they'll hear us. But obviously, you know, we exaggerated the chumminess and, you know, imagined them chatting about other things other than politics. And uh, that, was a, that was a nice feature of the show and one which I enjoyed. And it also gave a, a sort of, uh, it gave a, an opportunity to present a, a British-Irish um, perspective of the week's events as well, which was, was useful to the, the content of the show. Bertie and I, you know we've been through a lot, we had it all but now what have we got? We've been at the top now for over ten years, but still we're resented by most of our peers. My people love me! I kept my nose clean, was strong as a rock. Well, I love the creativity of the programme, being able to write and then come down here and Owen will suggest um, changes. He'll put the programme together in a particularly clever way very often, which I wouldn't think about. And then we have the, the sound technicians who do such a great job filling out the sketches. So I love the whole creative process. I must say, I find it absolutely extraordinary that this has been sanctioned at the highest level. I can't believe it. I really can't. It's quite remarkable. They're back. The folks on the hill. And of course, listen again any time on that BBC iPlayer thingy. 
extraordinary what they can do nowadays. It really is. Can you believe it, possums? They're back! The folks on the hill! You want to give us the start of that, because that hit a bit hard. Can you believe it, possums? They're back! The folks on the hill! They're back, everybody! The flocks in the hole! <laughs> I mean, the fox in the hole! <laughs> the folks on the hill! I got it! <laughs> <laughs> it would appear that they're back, Jeffrey. We're back, Peter. The folks on the hill, that's who. The rumours are true, Marty. What rumours, Jerry? They're back. Who? The folks on the hill. Brilliant. That's us. Ha, 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 ha. 